we are doing the video. Hi, this is Nitish here. A very good morning and very good evening to all the attendees since we have attendees from different time zones. Uh, today's webinar will be on application of iris recognition in CROs. Well, I'll give a brief info, brief about surgeon systems. We are into market since 19 years. Surgeon, a business technology company, has been providing information technology solutions to diverse industries to suit their business needs. Surgeon provides solutions and services across several industry domains including pharmaceutical, healthcare, life sciences, etc. complying to various regulatory guidelines. Surgeon offers consulting, implementation and regulatory services of global pharma, life sciences, regulatory requirements, regulatory trends and updates. Offers consulting, implementation and regulatory services. Well, you can refer our website www.surgeon.com for more information. Uh, we have a software solutions in regulatory, namely KnowledgeNet for dollar project tracking and submission, PVNet for drug safety database, BizNet for clinical trial management, uh, eSubmission Express for dossier on cloud, Process XC for electronic batch recording solution, QH for quality management system. We have more products in business for business that is F Force for field sales excellence platform, PharmaNet for sales and distribution solution, Procage for business process automation, FF reporting, CRM, SFA, and ED dating. Uh, we have respective website for the respective softwares. You can always visit there for more information. Uh, we have many clients. Well, I would like to introduce few uh, like. Indas, Lambda, Merck, Revlon, Cadilla, Accord, and many more. Well, today's speaker will be Alok Sharma. Uh, Alok, uh, he contributes as a subject matter expert and helps in understanding and analyzing the process of contract research organization in terms of their thorough process and management of project and electronic data capture followed up with working in teams for automation process at entry level. He also remains in touch with current clients to make sure that the solutions being deployed are relevant and are compliant with regulatory. He has authored many blogs, articles and case studies covering biometric enrollment and verification, process automation, technology updates, etc. He has been part of many requirement analysis and execution post through functional analysis with software departments. Well, I would like to inform, welcome Alo, Mr. Alo to give a webinar on application of iris recognition in CROs. Well, uh, many thanks Nitish for letting me to continue this webinar. The webinar's overview would be how this medium helps CRO in identification, how iris recognition technologies stack up to more common biometrics, richness of the iris data over other biometrics, move towards non-intrusive biometrics and how it can help CROs managing the track of thousands of volunteers and the last is how is iris recognition making a difference over other biometric options. So I'll just give you a quick note on biometrics like what is biometric? Biometrics are just methods of observing and measuring relevant attributes of living individuals or populations to identify active properties or unique characteristics over populations. Biometrics has benchmark for consistency differentiating or for differentiating individuals. Here we have two types of uh, matching called verification that is one is to one when uh, we try to uh, verify the claim that has been made by the uh, by an individual and we have an identification that goes as one is to n when we are uh, you know matching the subject against the entire database. Iris stands unchanged throughout the age, though it devolves, but at very slow rate. Uh, that, this means like uh, we have other biometrics called finger, we have facial uh, like biometrics, we have uh, voice, we have palm prints. The, so this all goes, uh, you know, it, it erodes uh, throughout the age, you know, throughout the passage of uh, age. But uh, iris stands unchanged, you know, throughout the age, it has been uh, searched and has been proved by many research uh, articles and uh, outcomes. 
iris recognition has uh, become a reliable method for verification well uh, biometrics types uh, can be defined into two uh, broad parts called uh, physiological and behavior if i break down physiological into uh, further would be face when we compare faces of individuals we uh, have fingerprints when we try to identify the you know identity using fingerprints we have hand as i said using uh, palm prints and all and iris that i'll be speaking about uh, today and we have uh, chemistry biometrics called dna that again uh, varies uh, person to person and we have uh, if we if i br uh, break down behavior into, uh, for the parts we have a keystroke we have signature we have voice and these are uh, further categorization of this uh, individual biometrics uh, as i said dna comes into the chemical biometrics and we have ear eyes iris and retina face fingerprints and uh, physiological biometrics we have uh, finger geometry recognition hand geometry recognition under physiological spatial biometrics we have gait typing recognition under behavioral biometrics and we have a signature under physiological behavioral biometrics well technology in the name of biometrics technology in terms of biometric is now taking advantage of uh, measurable bio biological characteristics or traits of human being to develop model and automatically identify people in a unique manner we can uh, build a centralized recognition system that helps avoid duplication and theft at grade level it has been uh, proved that uh, iris stands uh, very strong when it comes to you know uh, compare over other biometrics called uh, uh, fingerprint retina and palm prints and facial recognition etc etc it also helps uh, solving the valid verification details as physical presence of one is compulsory though the fingerprints palm prints and facial recognition sometimes can be uh, forged but uh, it's very 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 difficult when it comes to the forging practices of uh, irises helps it also helps in uh, aggregating patient data at a state and national level when it comes to manage thousands and millions of patients you know in cro's or could be in hospitals could be in state hospitals etc well uh, digitally available data bank for verification at any point of time the, this means uh, if any one is like if these things are getting implemented in a hospital or in cro's a strong digitally uh, digitally available data bank of various uh, you know irises can be made that again can be uh, used at any, any point of time for identification and verification of subjects or the volunteers it can also be accessed through any region or subject can be verified or identified imitating is uh, really very difficult it's very challenging and early adoption of uh, relying on fingerprints is now being replaced with iris there are many as face voice and palms as i told the reliability of this iris recognition to uh, proof identity identification that iris provides is of reliable nature and has become a useful way in transaction and secure securing uh, processing system well if i talk about the characteristics of biometric it could be universal universality uniqueness collectability permanence performance acceptability and confirmation since it uh, stands on chain over a long period benefits of iris recognition are as follows uh, it's a suitable application for authentication because it provides a better and reliable way of authentication it also continuously becoming popular since it is uh, less clumsy and easy to deploy at the site it also supports uh, our digital um, like you know uh, mission uh, in terms of e-commerce and e-government plans of going digital it also helps in securing online data and is readily available for audit to the regulatory firms when it is very very required it's, uh, the usage is uh, very user friendly and stands uh, good for strong identification and it identifies you as you strong algorithm behind the recognition of unique pattern the error rate is i can say it's negligible it's in one is to million or you can say one is to uh, thousands when it comes to to you know uh, find the loops helps in it also helps in curbing duplication and fraud in system uh, well, duplication of the identities identities is not possible
But what, what speculation says is like regulatory would soon implement the authentication and management of subjects uh, with iris recognition system wherever we are dealing with uh, you know uh, lots of uh, human population could be in, uh, since we know it's already there in the airports and in border crossing so the same could be implemented in hospitals in contract research organizations where the system is dealing with lots of people from various uh, you know states or national or cities or from rural and tribal areas global clinical data could be parked with genuine and unique identity from different regions a repository of uh, study could be maintained against uh, unique identity well we have uh, i would just like to give you a glimpse of our uh, software where we are using this recognition system and how it works if we have a subject we have all the details that is being fetched when the subject is identified against his or her uh, subject id well uh, we once we capture the ISIS, we click on the verify it goes to the database and it uh, matches the uh, you know data repository and it brings the match if it is there it also fetches the uh, you know the subject's name its age sex and all biometric uh, all uh, this uh, details you know so this is the view of our like software where we are using this where we capture and we do save we do update update in the sense uh, if you know that the last capture was not clear for a particular subject we may update with the reason with the remark and for this also we have uh, the audit uh, the you know the verification audit, audit trail is there for a uh, number of verification that has been done by n number of users we have identity and we have audit trail for uh, you know the updates that has been made so it, it would be like one in five or ten years if it is there since if we know that the, the last capture was not clear for the left or right eyes the same can be recaptured and updated in the system and with a strong oil trail so we have a proper validations like uh, iris is verified with the subject id xyz and if you are clicking if you are going for an update you would again alert the user with the message are you sure you want to update on the subject id with the subject name and would also give you a uh, validation whenever it is identifying or verifying would ask you for the remark too and, uh, since i talk about uh, oil trail we have two types of oil trails here for verification oil trail and the updates that we have made that is being captured here in oil trail well these are the main uh, functions that are there enrollment system captures left and right analysis of the subject recognition system retrieves all details pertaining to the subject once it is matched if it is not matched it's not going to give you any detail rather it would give you a message that the analysis are not matched verification when uh, that is uh, verified the uh, verified the, the provided analysis against the database identification identifies the provided data with the stored data ends. say if we have a subject already enrolled into your premises and uh, he, he comes and he's, he tells you like this uh, yeah this is my id so you just want to uh, prove his claim right so you you would capture his uh, the cap the access would be captured and uh, its subject id or it could be the name would be uh, would be given i would be clicked on the identification uh, uh, you know Ver verification so would help you in verification update uh, would help you in updating the irises uh, save uh, would save the iris images and template into the database and very we have two types of uh, oil trail called verification and oil trail maintain log of updates if made well there are many concerns over deployment like some Sometimes uh, it is uh, said like seems clumsy in deployment and managing, but it is not when it comes to biometrics. You know, the deployment and the development is very easy. Invasion of privacy: the data remains secure in the database since uh, you are not uh, giving this the stored database or the templates of the subjects to any third party. It's going to be there in your server. So multiple layer of layers of security is there high cost it is getting reasonable so it doesn't cost much it used to be costly earlier but uh, since it's there in the market now so it's really very uh, available at low cost
operational skills can be operated by any trained person. Error rates and challenges uh, are very less as compared to other verification mode. But I also uh, come across uh, an interesting note from case studies where I was going through lots of uh, case studies or journals. I came across this article uh, for using biometrics for participant identification in a research study. It was a case report where they talked about various biometrics and they also uh, showed the strong authentication system about uh, irises. So this was their uh, findings that they did. And they did using uh, you know, uh, subjects from various age group. They were having people within, uh, within the age group of 7 to 8 years and were having you know uh, elder to um, above eight years too and they just want to check like how uh, efficient it is so they proved that the iris, is, iris verification is really very efficient over other biometric options so you uh, i do have a link here you may refer this case study if it all you want well so, uh, if, if you know this uh, two types of error rates are all, always there with all the biometrics could be false reject rate and could be false accept rate so when we talk about false reject rate, it is it occurs when the biometric measure, measurement taken from the live subject fails to match the template stored in the biometric system. Right, that happens uh, rarely. As I said, it's uh, kind of negligible. And false accept rate occurs when the measurement taken from the live subject is so close to another subject's template that a correct match will be declared by mistake. So that again happens uh, very rarely. You can say it's negligible again. Crossover error rate, that is called CER, point at which the FRR and the FAR, this uh, briefed above, are equal. You know, the lower the CER, the more level and accurate the system. Having distance, uh, well, it is the difference between the presented iris code and the stored iris code in the database. Having distance of 0.342 is the normal CER means. If the difference between the live and the stored iris code is 34.2% or greater than greater than they are considered to have come from two different subjects. So that again happens uh, very rarely and it's like negligible. Let's have a look at the FAR and FFR from an instance. So there was, they, there was a study and they produced this data where they have uh, studied uh, with the handle distance uh, starting with 0.28 to, uh, up to 0.37 so if the handle distance is 0.28 that is 28 percent the false ex false accept probability would be one in one in um, you know millions or uh, false reject rate probability rate would be one in uh, 11,400 so, uh, Advantages of iris recognition technology uh, would be like uh, physiological properties of irises are major advantages to using them as a method of authentication. Since I told irises uh, stands unchanged uh, over the passage of years as compared to other biometrics available with us called fingerprints, facial or palm prints etc. Morphogenesis of the iris that occurs during the seventh month of gestation results in the uniqueness of the iris. Yeah. So the identity of uh, an individual is being made when during the gestation period only, when the kid is of seven months. Yeah, it is uh, oh, when the kid is of uh, seven months of gestation. It is highly protected internal organ of the eye. Yeah, this technique is not very intrusive as there is no direct contact between the subject and the camera technology. And it also poses no difficulty in enrolling people that wear glasses or contact lenses. And the speed and scalability of the technology are a major advantage over other techniques. Takeaway notes so like illness and distance could affect the accuracy of retinal scanning. When we talk about the retinal scanning, where people do claim that retinal scanning is uh, quite good over uh, iris scanning, or sometimes the issue comes. People want to know the difference between retina and iris scanning. So both are quite different. 
where the iris scanning is really very really easy uh, as over retinal scanning because it needs a little intrusion and it takes time also and it's, it's not that comfortable for uh, individual to, you know, to have their retina scan so an iris recognition is more flexible and efficient over retinal scanning the expense and impracticability of uh, retinal scanning is not conducive to mainstream use Retinal scanning is in invasive as a tool, it needs little, uh, it requires little invasion and not use it when I was just going through some uh, articles on net where I came across a Twitter poll where the uh, question was there, what is, it, what is considered to be the most accurate biometric modality among the following options where people have opted iris up to 58%, people have opted fingerprint up to 32% and palm and facial goes for 5% each. So again it has been proved like people are moving to uh, moving into iris technology using iris as a strong authentic authentication system over the biometric options. Well, uh, there's a suggestion where the need, of harm, need to harmonize and strengthen clinical trials all around the world would need a standard, standardized way of authentication system that suits best to the population system. Iris technician is one of the best reliable way of authentication uh, since I explained earlier in my slides how e easy it is and how strong it is. Well, the conclusions could be uh, biometric authentic authentication system provides a reliable option to combat the challenges of data replication and dual enrollment of subjects. Even though I, uh, I can explain you here, like you know, even though a subject is getting enrolled at multiple centers, and if all those multiple centers are having the having an access having access to the centralized system of iris templates, where they can uh, check the the you know the claim being made by a subject using this iris technician technology so if they are uh, verifying that subject using that iris technology all of his duplicate enrollment would be there so they can deactivate all those duplicate enrollments and relevant action can be taken you know to avoid the duplication and once iris enrolled would remain intact for long as i told it doesn't change over passage of years it can be verified anywhere at any point in time Biometric technologies are set to revitalize the, or the authentication system where the population is high. It is there in hospitals, it is there in uh, like you know research centers where they are where, where the where the management is dealing with uh, thousands of people on monthly or uh, you know yearly basis. The performance of virus is best as compared to other biometrics. Biometrics will become increasingly pop prevalent in day-to-day -day activities where proper identification is required well these are some suggested references that I came across I, 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 I did went to this uh, references that you may uh, have a look you know to understand how the general terminologies into this biometric and iris recognition and when it comes to the clinical use that also I have a link here and what is iris technology exactly so again I have several journals and uh, some links that you may refer Well, I'm back. Thank you so much, Alok, for your wonderful webinar. Hello, attendees. Uh, this is our feedback link. You can go to go through this feedback link and give your valuable feedback. It means a lot to us. Please spend a minute or two to give your valuable feedback. Once you're done, please let us know. Well, yeah, uh, I'll just copy this to a common chat box where you may copy and uh, open it in your browser. And spend uh, 20 to 30 seconds for your valuable feedback thanks well you may uh, shoot your questions if you have uh, any right meanwhile once you're done with the feedback you may shoot your questions Hey, hello. We have one question from our attendees. Uh, I'll read it for you. How efficient it is over other option is a question. Yeah, Nikisha, I'll just take a look on this. Well, uh, when it comes to 
the efficiency measuring the efficiency of this uh, uh, biometric option as i explained to you like you know uh, it's very efficient when it comes to the the you know comparison over other biometric option that we have uh, fingerprints facial or could be palm prints and voice measurement techniques so all has uh, you know uh, loops where the forge can be done easily when it comes to fingerprints the forge can be done easily and sometimes uh, and the error rates or the mismatch rates are high in, into this fingerprints and voice uh, people are not using that much voice identification and uh, so that is the reason i i i guess uh, the efficiency is very really very high when it comes to iris recognition as a uh, as a strong authentication system so hope the answer is clear to to you thanks oh well we have one more question from our attendees uh the question i'll read how difficult it is to implement well thanks for your wonderful questions well uh, as, as i told the implementation is really very easy uh, you know earlier it used to be very difficult where because uh, since it needs a lot of uh, database structure it needs a lot of uh, server connections because you know again you have to maintain the speed because uh, whenever you give command to match uh, in terms of identification and verification it uh, goes to the server and gets the data so that really needs a uh, good internet speed and uh, you know bandwidth so once you have if you have a good bandwidth and internet speed and a good connection between your host and the server the things are really very easy you know when it comes to uh, implement so the implementation is very easy i mean you may uh, have it uh, you know into your premises only or you may have the server in some other uh, in, at some other location where you would be working from any of the location but you are not storing the templates into your host right so if i talk about uh, this uh, you know, things like you may store those uh, templates into our repository where you can uh, do the do your work of ma matching from any of the location right thanks well i guess uh... attendees have done with a feedback well thanks for your questions and i would like to uh, give you like how we may help you we have uh, best biometric solution for your need and we may help you in managing your subject data we may help you manage your bab and ct ct trial study we may help you in archiving your precious data into archival system we have laboratory information management system that helps you to manage the laboratory data of uh, thousands or millions of subjects we have ecrm designing according to your study need we have uh, investigational and medi medicinal product track that we call i'm track that helps to track the medicinal drugs uh, you know from the scratch to the end into the cros we have intraweb response system management that helps uh, alert the user for any changes or uh, you know notifications well uh we have an email and website for more information you can always visit our email that is business.ctm@surgeon.com uh if you have any queries you can always write us on email that is biz.net.ctm@surgeon.com for more information you can always visit our website that is uh, www.biznet-ctm.in you can always connect us on our linkedin linkedin sorry okay thank you everybody so much for attending this uh, webinar thanks everyone once again thanks